Welcome to the Coffee Kids and Crazy Podcast, a show about creating heart-to-heart connection with your kids. Your podcast hosts, Brittany Serple and Seth Dahl, are here to answer your biggest parenting questions so that you can become a powerful parent. So get ready for Breakthrough as I welcome your hosts, Brittany and Seth. Welcome to the Coffee Kids and Crazy Show. Mm-hmm. We're back again. We are, and we're having fun. We are doing something a little bit different. We're going to give you a few extra... Extra memes. Extra memes today. We know you like them. We love them. We do. The first meme party was just so much fun. We're just going to keep going. All exactly. right, go so with your meme. Start here's with my meme. meme. All I'm saying is we spent way too much time and money on gifts for our three-year-old to go to sleep clinging a tube of chapstick. 100%. 100% every time. Just <laughs> every, buy the chapstick. Just just give them the box. Just give them the box. Oh, that is very real. I don't know how many. After Christmas. You'd think Lincoln somebody would actually box. learn. Maybe I'll think strategically this year and give them like a bale of bedding hay, which is eight ninety nine, and yeah. some knives from Amazon and paint targets on it. That'll be the best gift. Yeah. It, it'll be a whopping Fifteen dollars that I spent. All right. Well, we're it. we're gonna do another meme. It's the truth. And this is in honor of Ben. Yeah, dad so this joke. Is, this is a dad joke. It comes from dad jokes, and it says, "I made a playlist for hiking. It has music from Peanuts, The Cranberries, and Eminem. I call it my trail mix. Nice. <laughs> that one's for you, honey. My trail mix. <laughs> my there trail we go. mix." Oh, that is so real. I can hear Ben saying that. Mm-hmm. So my next meme has pictures. Two okay. pictures, one up top, one up bottom. The first picture says, first kid's room. And it is really pretty. perfectly decorated. Pictures on the Themed. wall, all kind of cute baskets, perfectly all the colors match. lined up. The colors match. Everything's beautiful. It's so nice. Mm-hmm. And then the bottom picture is second kid's room. And it's an empty <laughs> room. With a mattress on the floor and a child on the mattress in a blanket. Yep. No Nothing no else. bed frame, <laughs> no carpet, <laughs> no fancy rugs or baskets, oh. nothing on the wall. It's literally it looks like a they mattress just moved in the in. middle. Of, yeah, and it does look like they just moved no, in. And, no boxes in there, but it looks like they yeah. just moved in. I am guilty of this. Delaney had a themed room fully when she was a newborn. And we moved, and I themed out her room again, and then we found out we were pregnant. And I didn't, we didn't have a space, but I also didn't know what to do. So I, I just put Addie's uh, crib in the closet and to keep it dark. No, it didn't have closet doors. It was kind of open. Oh, okay. But that's, that was her second room was in the closet. In, in the, the closet. Crib. And I'm guilty of that one. All right. Then the last one that we'll do is uh, I thought it was funny. It's a picture of uh, Steven Tyler, mm-hmm. Aerosmith, and he's mm-hmm. he's going for it like he does. And it says, me, it's bedtime, good night. My kids, and there's Steven Tyler screaming out, I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to yep. fall asleep. <laughs> That's pretty much how it feels. That's it. But they show you in forms of rebelling and coming out over and over again. Because they'll miss you. <laughs> and they don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> right? It. Isn't that it? Going. Really is that song. Yeah. All right. So good memes for good meme, memes. the meme after party. Mm-hmm. But we also want to get into some good parenting stuff yeah. for you, like some good tools. Yeah. I, I mean, we've talked all of our podcasts. We reference tools and we talk about different things, but we thought we'd give a quick review um, just to look back. And if you want to hear this one, and this is where I'm going to lay them out as quickly as I can. Mm-hmm. We're uh, going to do a couple and two Two messages in one here. Yeah. Turbo versions. Seriously. Uh, But, of course, if you want more of this stuff in depth, um, the Parenting 101 course from Life Academy. Life Academy. Or Loving Your Kids on Purpose. Yeah. Books. Or other books that we have. So that's where you're going to check that out. But first tools I have are the one-liners. Would you love the one-liners? I do. You t- turn them into temporary tattoos. Yeah, because Danny and you always said, you need to tattoo these on your forehead. So we made temporary tattoos and passed them out to hundreds of people yeah. at Bethel. They had them tattooed on their... I had it on my arm. Yeah. So I, I could see it. I know, probably so. That could be, I don't know, nice try. Yep. Yeah. So that was speed round. They are, I know, probably so. That can be, could be, I don't know, nice, nice try. try. Which the goal of the tools... 
again, this is a review, is to never have to argue with your child again. So you have to picture yourself in the moments in the car where they're debating why can't they get that ice cream or why can't they go to their friend's house for a sleepover and you've given them a reason why already. So yeah. sorry, grandma's coming to town. We're staying home as family. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. I know. This is stupid. Probably so. I mean, that's how this goes. It is really... You're the worst mom ever. That could be... Nice try. All of it. Uh, goal here, you have to manage yourself when they are throwing their disrespect bombs yes. at your face. And these also give you distance, a little bit of distance and time to mm -hmm. think and yeah. and regroup. Because when they're throwing those bombs at you, it's, you need a little bit of a searching. shield mm -hmm. to be able to figure out what the next move is. Yeah. And and the goal here is for you to manage yourself, manage your um, ability to not engage in disrespect. The other thing I will say, and I've said it before, but don't use sarcasm because sarcasm is just candy-coated disrespect. If you start doing that, it, it's really, they're going to catch on quick that you're just being disrespectful and you lose the momentum and the value of these tools. So you are repeating them in this moment. I know, probably so. That could be, I don't mm -hmm. know, nice try. It is this repetitive nature, but the goal is I'm going to control myself so I don't have anything stupid that comes flying out. Yeah. And you're going to get tired of hearing this, so you're going to stop. Yeah. And then I'm going to be able to come up with the other end of, hey, that was no fun. I know you're sad. Let's find something else. But I need you to talk to me differently because yeah. that felt super yucky. That's You go back to that later when you're not in the heat of the moment yes. of emotions. Yes. So tool, tool review number one, one-liners. You just uh, kind of said another one. Almost, you were. I was close almost to. there. Well, what one is that? Let's talk when your voice sounds like mine. Yeah. Or? So feel free to have. I'd love to have this conversation as soon as your voice sounds like mine. Um, that I used a lot when my kids were older, and they'd get really sassy with me, or they'd start yelling. Um, I, or even when they were younger and they're just screaming at me, I'd say, "I, I can't hear you when you talk to me that way. If you want me to hear you, I need you to lower your voice or be yeah. respectful. Whatever is going on." Yeah. Um, and I would love to have this conversation when your voice sounds like mine. Goal right here, again, is I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do because I can't control you. Yeah. That is, that is an illusion. Yeah. There is no control that I have over you. I have control over me. Yeah. And I have control over whether I engage in a disrespectful conversation or not. Yeah. Um, the beautiful I, thing about this tool to me is that let's talk when your voice sounds like mine helps it because it helps you stay in control of you now you are help you're actually empowering them to regain control of themselves mm -hmm. which what as soon as we step yeah. out and go don't talk like that to me how dare you speak out like that in this house whatever it is that comes out we're trying to control them instead of give them the ability to regain control of themselves and so i think this is it's another one like the other ones the questions or the statements i know probably so those give you a little bit of space to think. And this one gives you permission and the ability mm -hmm. to just stay, hey, I'm going to stay calm and I'm going to actually help you regain yeah. calmness real quick. Mm -hmm. My daughter was really cool. We had a friend over a long time ago when she was probably seven mm -hmm. and our friend's watching and Brooklyn comes over is screaming, yelling, mad. And I said, babe, hey, I want to talk to you about this. I want to help you. Let's talk when your voice sounds like mine. And she just went, okay, Dad, I'm ready to talk. And my friend was like, what in the world what? was that? I said, do? that's, that's, let's talk when your voice sounds like mine. She knows I will mm -hmm. only talk to her when her voice comes down. And she's really good at bringing it down, mm -hmm. regaining control of herself. Well, because they have a need, and I want to meet that need. Yeah. But I don't want to wade through your disrespect. Yeah. Because um, I don't have any relationships like that. And yeah. I want to teach you not to have any relationships like that. Yeah. So I have to model it. And, and that's the big thing with all of these tools is you have to model it um, for them to learn it. They have to see you actively participating in it. Yeah. And that is a, a crucial element. Um, another one is fun or room. This is the land of toddlers. I say you're, you know, on the front lines of the battle. Mm -hmm. uh, it is it is exhausting because the no fun chair or funner room is you are just 
you're working at this over and over again. It's not a one-time thing. A lot of parents hope that it's a one-time thing. It's not. I did it through, I did it actually not very long ago when Adeline wasn't being very funny. I said, hey, I would love to talk to you when your voice is, sounds like mine and, and you're ready to be respectful. It. And yep. she keeps going and I say, okay, hey, no problem. Go ahead and come out of your room when you're ready to be respectful. Like this. Yep. And she's 12. Mm-hmm. So I have enough relationship where she went in her room. If she didn't, I would have moved myself somewhere else yeah. uh, because I'm that powerful. I yeah. can go in my own room. You let me know when you're ready to talk. I'll yeah. come back. Exactly. But I did a lot of, oh, that's no fun, fun or room. And that is the land of toddlers. And you are, it's like you're building up your biceps mm-hmm. like crazy. It I just need feels to like you do this all day long. Over and over and over. And it's, and it's, you have to be willing to, you're, you're creating a track, if you will. You're creating a path. And it, if you just walked around a tree one time, there would yeah. not be a path. a path. You have to do this repetitive motion over and over again. This is what we're doing. This is what I'm protecting for there to actually start to be ground that's been taken where other people can follow. I have to interject here. Okay. Because literally this morning in my Facebook group, Mm -hmm. we had someone saying, when do we use fun or room? Can we use it with one-year-olds? And always there's, there's parents who say, I don't like this tool because it's... My kids don't do well with isolation. Mm -hmm. My kids don't do well with separation. And so I ask some questions like, are you sure you know what the goal of this tool is? Are you sure you're using it right? Are there, what about the families that have used this and the kids have no sense of isolation, Mm -hmm. no sense of abandonment, no Mm -hmm. sense. So I think with this tool specifically, there are so many parents that are afraid. Fun or room, I'm putting my kids away from me. I'm separating myself from them. I'm removing them from my environment until they're ready to change and and be respectful or be kind. Um, I would like you to speak into that for a minute (laughs) because it was this morning and it, it happens every single time we talk about this. This type of thing comes up. There are a lot of parents who think this tool teaches... Rejection. Isolation, rejection, yeah. abandonment, and they are so afraid to use it mm-hmm. that they also don't ever set a boundary, I think, with how their kids are talking to them, yeah. behaving. So <clears throat> fire away. Well, I I will say that um, out of all the people that I've talked to that struggle with this, um, most of them struggle personally with boundaries. Uh, so the the idea of boundaries for themselves is already struggles because I I I might have my own Eden question mm-hmm. that has triggers me and my pain in this. Yep. I have people that tell me, well, God doesn't ever separate from us. I said, no, you're right. God is always there, but it is us that have to turn to Him. Mm-hmm. And our uh, our sin separates us from Him. Yes. Yeah. And. There is a requirement to get into heaven. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you forgot that part, but there's you know, one door. There's one door, and you and you to. have. It's a hard boundary. There's mm-hmm. no gray lines around this. So no. God does set boundaries, and 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 this is you know that's usually the example I get and uh, or push back on, and I and I give that one. And, and the other question a lot of people have is you know the rejection piece. My kids won't know that I love them. Which is also, so it's fear. Mm -hmm. I am so afraid for my kids to feel rejected Mm -hmm. or not loved that I won't require any change, any Mm -hmm. adjustment from them at all. I have boundary issues or I'm really afraid. Mm -hmm. And and this is the the Eden question again. If you can go and maybe look at yourself and your struggle there, that would be one thing I would do. Uh, the next piece is what is the message you're sending all the rest of the other times? If I love, protect, nurture, but I set boundaries in other ways, this is the same thing. It's Mm -hmm. just another boundary. Mm -hmm. It is a, hey, you want to be fun or do you want to go in your room? I am not just putting them in their room without any conversation and walking out. Yep, that's not what this is. There is, I am empowering you every step of the way. I want my children to be so empowered. And how they learn is from the very beginning. And so me being able to set a boundary of, hey, that's no fun. Do you want to be fun? 
and stop throwing your sippy cup on the ground, mm-hmm. or do you want to be all done and get down? There's mm-hmm. a boundary right there. Yeah. Let's say it escalates to they're now picking up their sippy cup, opening the lid, and throwing the milk across all onto over. your carpet. Or your computer. Or your computer. Yeah. Oh, buddy, that's no fun. Do you want to be fun and keep your sippy cup lid on, or do you want to go into your room? Or it's hitting the baby, or yeah. it's who knows what it is, trying to put the toy dinosaur in the outlet socket. I don't know what it is. Or the fork. Something, yeah. whatever it could be, or it's hitting you in the face. Hey, oh, that's no fun. Do you want to be fun, or do you need to go to your room? I am giving you a choice. Choice is the difference. I am not punishing you. I am disciplining you, and I am empowering you. Yeah. I have a very different goal. Well, and the beautiful thing about this is as soon as you're ready to mm-hmm. be fun, I'm right come here. on out. So I think, you know, a long time ago, I've talked with parents that are literally like, yeah, I stick my kid in the corner for 20 minutes. If they talk me, like, okay, so even if they repent and change. In the first minute. In 20 seconds, yeah. you have 19 minutes and 40 seconds left. That is where this is going to create some of those things. This is, that's where this is going to happen. No, but the whole, as soon as you're ready to be fun, come on out. As soon as you're ready to change your voice and talk, come on out. And I think the other element is the goal. Parents don't know the goal of this mm-hmm. is not to get your kids away. It's to keep them close. The it's goal the is the value. And and yes, and appreciate what mm-hmm. it is that they have in closeness to you. But the goal is, I want you with me. Mm-hmm. Here's what I need yeah. for you to be with me. I'm with you. I'm not I'm not going anywhere. Putting a kid in another room is not leaving the house and abandoning them and like, oh, no. I went out for You're not in the car in the garage and you're in the house and they're left out there to scream. Yeah. That is that would be Horrible. Yeah. That is not what we're doing. Yeah. We're trying to create an area where this child learns empowerment, the value of us staying connected yeah. and res- uh, having a respectful relationship with each other. Yeah. I want my children to grow to have respectful relationships. That And that starts teeny tiny when they start slapping you in the face. Mm-hmm. Teeny tiny. Oh, that's no fun. You. you know, I'm not going to hold you if you're going to hit me in, in the face. Yeah. So if you have this belief system... You're not going to be able to set a boundary with anything disrespectful that they do because that's no different than fun or room is if you put them down because yeah. how is that not a rejection message? I mean, you're literally going to spin everything through your glasses, the mm-hmm. lenses that you've put mm-hmm. on because of something you're personally struggling with. How will you ever drop them off at church? How will you ever how let w- them go to school? Yeah. I, I mean, that you've got How will to you ever let this- them sleep in their own bed? How will you ever let them go to a friend's house and play? You're How will you ever let them have a car? If you, and that's that's the biggest problem is that there's something that is you've got to understand. Go to Jesus, help him see where boundaries he put into play. I mean, he didn't heal everybody. How does that not send a rejection message? Mm-hmm. But there's still when everyone's gathered around the pool exactly. and he touches one guy. So. I, there's a there's a question that you need to answer for yourself that you're bleeding into your parenting that you're going to rob your children of an opportunity of growing and learning how to be empowered if you're not willing to address it yourself. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Coffee Kids and Crazy podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please subscribe and give us a rating. When you rate the show, it helps other parents find us. Please go subscribe and rate the show now. This is this is huge. Clearly, we're a little bit passionate about it. We are very passionate about it because it it keeps you from so much with freedom without boundaries. We yep. Danny said this forever. Yeah. This one this one statement mm-hmm. right here has transformed my life over and over and over. Freedom with no boundaries is chaos. Yep. And and. We have a lot of families with a ton of chaos because they don't have a tool. They don't practice a tool to go, here's what I need for you to be in this room or for you to be here. Mm -hmm. I am so afraid to separate you. I am so afraid to move you somewhere else. I am so afraid to help you, to lead you to repentance. I'm so afraid to do this that I have absolute chaos in my home, yep. whether my kid is so clingy and they can never be apart from me mm-hmm. because I've never had any kind of boundaries or whether my my kid treats me with what the, whatever they want, however they want to. 
I've, I've worked with a lot of families where I'm like, you don't even require your child to make a mess when he's treated somebody horribly because you, you require mess. nothing yeah. from him. You require nothing from him. You are so afraid for him to feel any kind of rejection from, from yeah. your boundaries that this kid is absolutely off the walls. Oh, they have our number and they go, oh, look what happens. Mm-hmm. And I think I've dealt with a, um, parents that want to be a friend because it feels safer, like there's more permission and access than to be a parent. Yeah. But, I mean, God designed us to be his children, so we long for him like a parent. Yeah. And that's the same thing that he does when he gives us these kids is it's not for us to be yeah. friends. Yeah. That season comes when yeah. they're out of the house and over 18 but they're still a parent. And friendship needs to be under yes. parents. Like that's, I'm friends with a, my kids. It's Me a and my kids thing. are very good friends. Yeah. I love them. And first parent. Right. I, I think that the the roles do change in their seasons of life. And and I will say, as an adult child, my parents are always still my parents, but they feel more like the friend role than they yeah. are my parent role now yeah. in this season. Absolutely. But that's because it, it shifted because I grew to be an adult probably happened even before I was an adult in some sense there's a just different roles that they have but that that's where things get skewed is I turn my friend role on first before my parent role Mm -hmm. and then I get intimidated at oh I won't get access Mm -hmm. oh I won't have permission oh I I'm gonna get rejected and so I live out of fear and parent from there let me throw this out there the father Mm -hmm. with the two sons okay prodigal son Mm mm-hmm makes a decision, leaves the house. Dad doesn't separate him, but dad allows him through his decisions to leave the house, go off into a foreign land, Mm -hmm. blow all the money he just gave him, mess his whole life up. Where's the father the entire time? At home. Mm -hmm. He doesn't chase him down. Mm -hmm. He doesn't follow after him. He doesn't rescue him. He doesn't go get him out of his mess. But he's watching every moment for a little tiny change. As soon as he sees that kid come, he's after him. But before that, the father actually allows separation so the child can feel the pain of his decision and remember what he's missing out on and come back. And as soon as he comes back, there's the father. I think... We've got to remember God is a father. Mm -hmm. We've got to remember in Hebrews, the Bible says, if you don't, this is King James Version, if you do, if a child does not have discipline, they are a bastard. Mm. That's what it means. That's what it says. What that means is we invite the orphan spirit into our children's lives if we don't discipline them. We all know don't punish Fear involves punishment. Yeah. Perfect love casts out fear. But we react and we go, oh, I don't want to introduce the punisher into my home. Yeah. I don't want to introduce yeah, yeah. the devil into my home. But then we don't discipline. And mm-hmm. if we don't discipline, not only well, good job, we didn't invite the punisher, but we invited the orphan spirit. Now yeah. our kids may live in a home with two parents or one parent. They have a roof over their head, but they're living like orphans because the spirit I've allowed in through a lack of discipline, a lack of boundaries, has invited the orphan into our home, mm-hmm. into their lives. That's a scary, scary do thing. Do not for do me. that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't punish, <laughs> but don't not yeah. discipline. You have to learn boundaries and discipline, guardrails. How many of us are so thankful on a mountain road, there's guardrails. How many of us are thankful there's lines on the street, there's curbs on the street, Mm -hmm. there's red lights and stop signs? What are those? Those are all boundaries so people don't die, so people don't get hurt. Wow, you scraped up the side of your car. Aren't you glad you didn't drive off the cliff? Mm -hmm. Hey, there's guardrails that help us, and we're really grateful for them. We have to have this as parents. We have have to have have them. You have to have the correct lineup because when you do put that friendship role as as the main authority in the house that's that's i think the open door to the orphan spirit mm-hmm. that comes in because i am i'm not going to live either discipline or punishment i'm going to live for acceptance of my kids wow and and that which what, means you've got a needing question that needs to be answered from god not your kids and you've that, got your kids in your god spot and every time i've seen a parent do that it's because there's pain yeah. and there's fear yeah. of their own uh, rejection. Wow. So, 
I don't know if you feel this. I feel like this is one of the most important episodes we've done <laughs> right now. It it is it is a crucial piece because there's um, you miss the opportunity of of the fullness that God has designed for family, and and I think now in a lot of ways we've we've gone so extreme in running away from what our parents did, which, I, mm-hmm. I mean, I've said before, my parents spanked me like crazy. It was the only tool yeah. they had. Yeah. I, that we was went from extreme control yeah. and punishment, but every time you react to one error, you mm-hmm. can create another mm-hmm. very bad, equal, yeah. if not worse, which is spank, punish, control to zero boundaries at all, zero discipline at all. And, and we think that it's um, freedom and... Uh, discovery of self, but it's chaos and still fear. Fear mm-hmm. was over here, mm-hmm. fear is over here. Mm-hmm. You have to live convicted by what is the Holy Spirit guiding me. I mean, He is our helper. Yep. He is there to guide us and to give us instructions for all these things. Yep. But when we operate in fear, we silence His voice. Yep. So we've got to figure out what you're going to do, and you need to know the correct lineup of what it means to be a, a parent and the assignment of what being a parent is meant to do yeah. and and the fruit that comes from that. So hard topics. Hard topics. And we just changed we just the kept, whole entire we did. episode. We did the lineup of everything. Do you have another tool? Another tool. For discipline. For, because we don't want the orphan spirit. We, we want, want sons spirit, and sure. daughters, not orphans running around in our house. I, I think the biggest tool with any 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 of the tools I use, uh, one-liners, um, funner room, uh, feel free to talk to me when your voice is calm. What, what also, do you, also, these like, it's how you deliver them. Yes. And that's, it's how that's you what do, I was getting. Like, even with the whole, I know probably so that, mm-hmm. you could be like, I know, you said no sarcasm. Yeah. I know, probably so. That could be, I don't know, nice try. Like, mm-hmm. wow, you could use the tool to be a real jerk. Mm-hmm. You, It's how you deliver this. It's how you deliver a funner room. I want you with me. Yeah. I want you here. Here's what I need. Mm-hmm. That's so different than funner room. You're, you're isolated. Like, or, or even when I put them in their room, that it's this extreme aggression that's built a, a, up in me because I'm so frustrated that it it's manifesting through my body language. Mm-hmm. And I, I think the the self-care is we've talked about before, but that's yeah. that's going to help you be successful in managing yourself. All these tools, it, the goal in this, in you learning the tools is not that your children are, are obedient. I think that's the fruit. Mm-hmm. But yes. the goal for this is for you to learn how to have um, self control and manage yourself, because if I can, if I can remain in peace and joy, and I can operate in these tools, and I can live a life where I'm pursuing and loving my children, the fruit naturally is connection and obedience. But if I'm fighting for this to con- and in my my pursuit is manipulation and control, I'm gonna get rebellion. Yes, it will show up one day or another. Well, we call it rebellion. I think it's really just begging for it's some self control. Begging for yeah, you're harvesting. I I don't know if I would if I would fully define it as full on rebellion. Well, that is what is I, called. Yes. Yeah. But I think the proper interpretation is yeah. your kid is begging for a little autonomy. Your kid is begging for a little bit of self control. And if we if they don't have self control, here's the scary part: we've removed the Holy Spirit from them because the Holy Spirit is giving them self control. Not God control, mm-hmm. not parent control, self control. Yeah. And if we remove that from them, oh no. Yeah. And this is this you you end up with that when you parent out of fear because you've gotten rid of the comforter. Comforter has no voice. Yeah. It's been silenced. Yeah. So we started well, off fun. putting yourself in the This God is spot. why we had a meme party. This is, is to why lighten we had a meme the party. load. We had a whole other plan, but we got but down we a fun. rabbit trail. That but it's very important. It is very important, and it's something that we we want to make sure you're doing this. I wish I well. could post this episode today. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll get the question again. Don't oh, worry. Yeah. So I, I guess lean into understanding your goal. Uh, lean into understanding the tools and the heart behind them. 
Um, it's about you being successful. So the fruit from this gets to be a connected, intimate life with your family and your children. And, and you thrive in growing together. Let me just say this. Let me say, I'm going to say this. I've watched your family. Yeah. I know your family. Yep. I've stayed in your house. I'm staying in your house right now. I watch your family. You've used these tools their entire lives. Yeah. Your kids are so connected to you. Your kids are so connected to Ben. And you have set very good boundaries in love. And I, I can see this fruit of 16 years of this, mm -hmm. of 12 years of this, of nine years of this. The fruit is you're very connected to your kids. Your kids are connected to each other. Yeah. Uh, of course they have their stuff. <laughs> yeah. They're connected. How would you do that? You required something mm -hmm. of everyone. We're protecting something. We're protecting our culture. We have boundaries not just to keep out the bad stuff, but to keep in what we really want. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere of heaven is in your home. If I'm going to, like, I don't know. You guys have never looked within Brittany's home. You've never stayed in Brittany's home. You've never been in here. I've been in here many, many, many times. I'm friends. I love these kids. These kids love me. We're, we're, we love each other. But I can tell you right now, like, mm -hmm. your family is connected because of this kind of stuff. Yeah. Your, your 16-year-old is not traumatized and isolated. She's connected and close. It's beautiful. Proper use of discipline and tools. And I think the hope is... That for everyone. Yeah. You keep going. Keep keep trying. Keep making mistakes. Keep getting back up. Keep mm -hmm. looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, wow, last night was really hard. Yeah. I don't know that I'm going to live today because I still feel in pain from last night. Or we've never crossed this ri this river before, and it is raging. What are my priorities? Where are we going to stand? What am I going to trust? And the biggest thing is it's always the Holy Spirit. And knowing that the goal is connection with these kids. So I don't know what the lineup is in your house, but I think... I'm pretty sure that the Holy Spirit is accessible at any moment that mm -hmm. you ask him to come. Yeah. So that's what I'd be leaning into. Definitely. So I believe in you. Yeah, me too. And uh, invite the Holy Spirit and see what happens. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks for listening. Never miss an episode of the Coffee Kids and Crazy podcast by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watch it on the Loving on Purpose YouTube channel. That's it for this episode. We'll see you next time.